As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, so does everybody see this blue book that's in your pew? I know it's kind of a mysterious thing we have in here, but grab those now, and what we're wanting you to do is think about are there some favorite hymns, or even in that Faith We Sing book, if there's a song or hymn, uh, we're going to uh, share in hymn singing today. And uh, one of the pieces, uh, just to share a little bit from our scripture today, uh, but also, I don't know how many know that the United uh, Methodist or the Methodist movement, we are a singing people. You know, obviously there, uh, if you read uh, lots of things, they say, well, United Methodists love to have potlucks. Well, that's true too. But we also, we also are singing people. We, we enjoy our hymns. And in fact, our hymns are teaching vehicles for us. Um, so when the people in the early days of Methodism, John and Charles Wesley, now we've heard a lot about John Wesley, but Charles, his brother, was a prolific hymn writer. He wrote over 6,000 hymns. And, uh, and in fact, it was because of Charles and John's work together, uh, they helped move and motivate the Methodist movement, not only with you know, John kind of focusing on the scriptures and, and the word of God, but then we had these hymns uh, that Charles would write. And in fact, two hymns, of note that he wrote that Christians all over the world sing. One is at Easter, Christ the Lord has risen today. That's a Charles Wesley hymn. And the one at Christmas is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. So you can see how their influence of singing and the importance of singing, not only uh, in our devotional life, but in our worship life, but also in our devotional life as well. So in our scripture today, we heard let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. So from the time of King David, when we have the psalms in the Bible, uh, we also have, it's, you know, singing is an important part of our worship. It's, in fact, oftentimes I, ex I experience singing as kind of the heart uh, of our worship experience because as we sing, it's another form of us giving praise uh, to God. So uh, our singing also teaches us, these hymns were also a way to teach us theology or the, uh, the study of God or understanding God. And if we know within the uh, uniqueness of the Methodist understanding of God is um, uh, prevenient grace, justifying grace, and sanctifying grace. Now, what we mean by grace is, you know, God's offer of free love to all of us. So provenient grace is that grace of God that goes before us. We don't even know it. We don't even realize it. Early in our lives, God was working in our lives, and oftentimes we didn't know it. Hence, Wesley called this provenient grace. Then there was the justifying grace, which is justification by faith, which means we are justified in our faith. It is by faith alone that we come to know God in Jesus Christ. And then sanctifying grace is saying, once I've said yes to Jesus, now I want to grow in this faith. And much of that was related in our sermon series, The Disciples' Path, when we talked about prayers and presence and our worship, gifts, serving, and witness. Those are all part of this journey of sanctifying ourselves and experiencing God's sanctifying grace. So some of the hymns that were important for that, for example, in Provenient Grace, Charles Wesley wrote a hymn called Come, O Thou Traveler Unknown. And it's about the story of, 
of wrestling with, with Jacob. Justifying grace was another one it's called, and can it be that I should gain, or as we heard earlier, amazing grace. Or sanctifying grace is love divine, all love's excelling. So a lot of the hymns teach us about the power of God's grace. And hence, if you even look in the hymnal, there are a lot of them are divided in certain areas for certain themes of the Christian faith. So not only is hymn singing an act of praise and joy, but it also is a way to touch our hearts, to know the scriptures, and to understand our beliefs, and it reinforces again that gift of, of knowing God more fully in our lives. Now, I want you to turn in the very front of the hymnal. You gotta go to page, well, it's even a Roman numeral, Roman numeral seven, V11. You'll see that Charles Wesley wrote, you know, he was so organized, he even wrote a policy on how to sing. It's called Directions for Singing. So if you look right way, way in the front, not even, you gotta get to the, like the, the, you see the United Methodist hymnal page, and then you see a preface, and then when you turn it, you should see Directions for Singing, okay? So it says, learn these tunes before you learn any others. Afterwards, learn as many as you please. Sing them exactly as printed here without altering or amending them at all. And if you've learned to sing them otherwise, unlearn it as soon as you can. So if you're singing wrong, unlearn it and learn it right. And it says, sing all. See that you join the congregation as frequently as you can. Let's not a slight degree of weakness or weirdness hinder you. If it is a cross to you, Take it up and you will find a blessing. Sing lustily and with good courage. Beware of singing as if you were half dead or half asleep. Okay, so we don't need any half dead or half asleep people here when we're singing today. But lift up your voice with strength. Be no more afraid of your voice now, nor more ashamed of it being heard than when you sung the songs of Satan. Sing modestly, do not bawl so as to be heard above or distinct from the rest of the congregation that you may not destroy the harmony. So again, another image of singing together is it pulls us together in a sense of unity as we sing uh, the songs together. Sing in time, whatever time is sung, be sure to keep with it. Do not run before or stay behind it, but attend close to the leading voices and move therewith as exactly as you can. And take care not to sing too slow. This drawling way naturally steals on all who are lazy and it's high time to drive it out of us. Sing all our tunes just as quick as we did at first. And then lastly, above all, sing spiritually. Have an eye to God in every word you sing. Aim at pleasing him more than yourself or any other creature. In order to do so, this attends strictly to the sense of what you sing and see that your hearts are not carried away with the sound but offered to God continually so shall your singing be such as the Lord will approve here and reward you when you cometh in the clouds of heaven. So now we have the instructions from John Wesley on how we're to sing hymns. And, uh, and for us, as I said, we as United Methodists are a singing people and we, we celebrate that together. So we're going to invite you. Uh, now, I got Parker to help us out here with some of these hymns. Uh, he calls this Stump the Piano Player or Stump the Organist in the other piece, but uh, we are grateful that he's willing to help us out here as we pick out a variety of hymns that are your favorite songs, and we'll sing a couple verses of each of those so we can get as many of them in here today. So who...